All right, and our final guest for this episode is, of course, the one we've all been waiting for, one of our newest members of the podcast, hailing from the land of Chicago, the antithesis of coronavirus, a one all thesis. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, all thesis, as the newest member, that means you got to go through the traditional introduction. So let me start off by asking you, what do you remember or what do you think got you in the gaming? Oh, gaming. Really what got me into gaming was I went over to another a neighbor's house uh -huh. and he had an NES. You got to understand, this was the late 80s, maybe the early 90s. And he had the original Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers 3. And I was just amazed at how interesting the game was to me. I was a little kid and it actually held my interest. And I'm like, I got to do more of this. But as I got older, I will find out that before I was born, my parents were gamers. My parents had one of the original Ataris back in the 80s before I was born in the early 80s before I was born. So I kind of had gaming in my family. And I had a neighbor who had an NES. I used to go over and play Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. Then a little later on, we finally got a Super NES and a Sega Genesis. And I've been on gaming ever since. I fucking still hate that Duck Hunt dog. Anytime somebody picks that motherfucker in Smash, I try to make it look like I'm not paying them attention, but I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Duck Hunt dog used to be, it used to taunt you terribly. Like, you wish you could shoot the dog <laughs> instead of the birds. So, yes. actually, yes. yes. That's what the fuck I wanted to do. <laughs> I want to chase the dog, not because I hate dogs, but because that dog is a dick. Yes. And that's the thing about Duck Hunt, that dog was humbling for a little kid for being a little kid during that time period yeah that dog was very humble <sighs> so that aside um all right so uh with that being said i mean uh the last thing before we get into the topics is uh what gave you an interest or at least what do you think gave you an interest in going down the right of you know being a psychologist or psychiatrist well, the thing about psychology was, I mean, my mom, so when I was like a young in my teens, like 10, 11, 12, that age group and that age range, well, my mom ended up going back to school and I ended up reading her books out of boredom. And that was what was interesting to me. But at that time, understand this was the mid to late 90s on the west side of Chicago. And as a kid, you're thinking of, quick ways to get out and the only way i knew to get out at the time even though i was interested in the books was potentially be a lawyer or some type of accountant huh. but it was Damn. mainly i was mainly going to go with lawyer but that changed when i got to college and when i started to find out that hey, some of the um did you put like a curtain over you or something no no curtain oh okay sorry i got a little muddled continue Oh, my bad. So what ended up happening was that changed a little bit when I got to college. I mean, I took a fair amount of criminal justice classes. I even took business law online. Never take business law online. That's a bad idea. You actually need to be in front of somebody to understand some of those concepts in that class. So 06 rolls around and I ended up majoring in psychology just to see what I could do with it. And I found that there was actually stuff that I could do and I could make money. And I was looking at forensic psychology at the time because it would keep me interested in the legal field, which is what I wanted to do anyway, somehow. But now that I'm older at this point, I'm just trying to survive. So I don't have to be a forensic psychologist. If I could just break in and have some sort of stable work it's fine but unfortunately the problem with the industry is you're kind of hampered to what insurance companies say you can and can't do and insurance companies prefer medicine over talk therapy and the other types of things that we learn mainly because it's it quick more and efficient 
No, it's because it's, you get some more money. That too. Pharmaceutical industry is a billion dollar industry, especially for mental health drugs. I mean, I don't know if you I don't know if you've heard since the last time we really had a serious conversation, but dude, they're microgramming LSD now as a treatment for depression. Yes. Um, treatment was they're also using ketamine for treatment resistant depression, but you have to be, you have to have your blood levels monitored. You basically have to be inpatient in order to even get that treatment. And, but the treatment is so expensive. I think that to get the ketamine based depression treatment, it's like five figures out of pocket. And I bet you if you take your ass across the border or you go to a different country, it'll be not even half that fucking disgusting. Capitalism may, I'd at say work. maybe, yeah, capitalism at work, and I'd say that that's about a third. You you would be paying a third of what you pay. You would be paying 67% off in a European Union country or a country like Switzerland or Denmark. See, You would be paying significantly less. See... I wish you could have been in a room or maybe you wouldn't have wanted to be in the room when I was watching, excuse me, one of the last episodes of uh, The Daily Show before uh, mm -hmm. pre-quarantine. And yeah. one of the insurance companies was literally paying people to go to South America by mm -hmm. shuttle and plane to go and get their medication because based on the North American prices, they save almost $3,000 per person because the medication over there, down there, was like 85% cheaper. That was fucking insane. Yeah, you're going to find that a lot, and even north of the border in Canada. Because I'm in Chicago, it really, you know, Toronto is a two-hour flight from Chicago. Dude, take the train. So if like, I... Like, the train is like about $50 cheaper. Exactly. You could take the train up there, and you know what? I could get a pharmaceutical out of pocket for cheaper in Toronto come back home on that train and still have less money than I will pay out of pocket for certain medication. Greatest nation in the world. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, so they said, yeah, that's kind of what I'm like. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we ain't caught up pretty much since I practically started adulthood, not metaphorically, literally. Right. Um, but, you know, always happy to have an old face show up in a new project. So, hey, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. You can leave whenever you want. You'll find that I am not a dictator in this situation. If you got an idea, suggestion, or topic, whatever, we can try to get it done. Especially since, well, I ain't got shit to do no more. I had three Fair. jobs, keyword had. One keeps right. getting put on hiatus by government mandate because it was a federal job. The other one, they literally had a coronavirus infectee in the entire facility and they have no idea how they're even going to clean or nuke that place to get rid of any possible Corona cooties. Not to mention the third job, stand up. Yeah, good luck. So ain't nobody opening their doors so just so they can get a fucking fine over here. Nah, fuck that. Right. So yeah, I've got nothing but time and patience and anger. But that's another side. All right. Let's get into them topics. You already know what the deal is. Uh, you heard the original topics from the beginning of this episode be explained. So mm -hmm. why don't you go ahead and go ahead and drop us uh, how you feel about topics one through four. Okay, so I'm going to start with topic one. And this is one that, well, you remember back in the day. We used to, GameStop was where you used to go for your games. This was before the internet became super robust and you could just order things. AKA the and destruction they were still by Amazon. Exactly. Which that's another topic that I will I will save my anti capitalist soapbox on that for another podcast. But there's a lot about happen. Amazon that really bothers me. So GameStop was the de facto place to go, but growing up, there were multiple game places I could go before GameStop even existed. You had um Funko Land. Funko music Recycler Land. Funko Land. You had Funko Land, you had Babbage's, you had Music Recyclery. See, which was at, at the North Riverside Mall. I think it was at one of the malls. You could get a lot of old games for cheap over at Music Recyclery because people had bartered with their old games to get 
music or other old games. So you actually had options. So when GameStop started to become the de facto option, um, the lack of competition pretty much meant that GameStop was just gonna charge whatever and do whatever. Like trade-ins at GameStop were horrible. Like you could trade in mint condition games and you'd barely get like a five dollars off of it. And these new games at the time, you remember, they were around fifty, sixty dollars. My favorite. This is still PS2, is when, PS3. My favorite part is when they started trying to lock up their garbage cans and dumpsters if they couldn't get something to sell instead of selling it on their website. Oh, these perfectly fine controllers that are uh, first party brand, PlayStation, 360, GameCube, well, they're collecting dust because everyone wants to get the off brand or off model ones, not just because they're cheaper, but because they have more functionality nine times out of 10. So you know what, let's just mm -hmm. go throw these away. What the fuck, people are taking them out the dumpster? Hey, 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 go chop them cords off. I'm like, bitch, it's still cheaper to go and mail them bitches in and get a new cord than it is to buy them new. Make up your mind. If you're gonna sell a product, sell a product. If you can't get it to move, discount it. Why are you acting like this? Why are you punishing us for your issues? And that's what GameStop was. And you remember that we had somebody that used to work at GameStop back then. Dude, so he like, always used yeah, to tell uh, us about the bullshit. Jordan was his name. Jordan, and there was also later on um, Pierre when it ended up going right. Out. Right. It was one of them. But I do remember Jordan used to work there and GameStop was just terrible. It was a terrible place to go. I never wanted to get my games from there. If I was going to get my game from somewhere, I'd usually wait for a Best Buy sale. Which is kind of messed up. Or eBay. eBay was around in 2004, 2005, 2006. So you would go on eBay for good deals. But... GameStop has been in a world of financial hurt ever with the proliferation of Amazon and the increased influence of eBay. eBay and Amazon became giants, so that was a win for gamers because gamers no longer had to deal with these horrible trading policies for seventy or eighty dollar game. Want to hear something funny about uh, Shh. eBay? Sure. Uh, it goes without saying. I don't even have to ask that you've watched the Boondocks. However. <laughs> Remember one of their yeah. one, the first time they started getting commercials, they had this giant black dude singing them Broadway songs. They say there's something every day on eBay. That guy? Yeah. Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> and the black yeah. dad from Malcolm in the Middle. Oh yeah. Yeah. That is actually, yeah, yeah, that's actually something that I remember that did happen. But I mean, it's not, it was never going to be the government shutdown that shut down GameStop. eBay and Amazon were just giving better deals to people. Okay, now with that being said, since the government has been revoking licenses and they're trying to play fast and loose with their uh, lawyers to try to get people to fucking say shit. Even though those lawyers are not int uh, national lawyers, because first off, ain't nobody got a national lawyer. Uh, right. Do you think that this is their final year? I Now, that I don't know. I do think that a couple of stores will still exist until they eventually fade to the wayside. But I mean, you got to look at it. Best Buy, and then you got to look at um, you know what else actually hurt GameStop and console gaming? The what? growth of the, the, the interest in computer gaming had actually changed a lot. And you know how you can get a lot of good parts and build yourself a decent sub 800 build and play games so. GameStop used to be big in selling consoles, but when desktop, remember, there was the desktop war in the early 2000s. Actually, the then desktop it had, war never stopped. It's just that now no one cares about it anymore. PC Master Race. I'm like, okay, so I'm magically your slave because I play consoles. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard of, but continue. It is, but technically, I will say that desktop, that of the of, of mobile computing devices I read three years ago, that apparently desktops have made a comeback. And I think that one of the reasons why is because of the small form factor PC. I agree. 
the and small the form factor PC get, uh, was a win. Transformer laptops, or actually, I don't think there's a proper title for them, but we got laptops now where the parts you can utilize in them are one to one with desktop. Mm -hmm. In fact, Alienware's 2019 uh, Ooh, brand. I'm glad their you brought that up. Their entire line for laptops were completely uh, made with one to one desktop parts, so everything can go in there. You can actually stick a graphic card for a desktop inside of that laptop. In fact, uh, whenever or if I ever end up upgrading my machine, because I was kind of annoyed by mm -hmm. it, I didn't see it coming. I actually bought the final model before that model came out. Ooh, I wish you waited because that Area 51M is a great niche for people that need a desktop replacement and a seven pound body. But you see, here's the thing though. You have to remember, they also made the desktop graphic card adapter situation. So my first thinking is- The okay, amplifier, well, right, right, yeah, right, right. I don't actually need to fuck with even upgrading my shit. I just need that desktop amplifier because the, the, the whole by itself is like 200 and some change, if even. So really, mm -hmm. you just gotta wait till you can get the graphic card. So I'm thinking of further along the lines, like, oh, I'm gonna be fine. Plus, I mostly do work. I don't really game on my computer. And the few computer right. games I do have are usually things that aren't necessarily universal or exclusive to the laptop, I should say. So mm -hmm. imagine my surprise when the same day it comes in the mail, I find out this shit's coming down the pipeline. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see what the um, Area 51 Mark II is eventually going to look like because there's it's going to come out. And then AMD is going to come out with um, a desktop grade laptop where you can just use desktop grade parts inside of a laptop and it's only 5.7 pounds. Like they're getting better. It's going to be some good value out here. And I think that when you see laptops now being able to take full desktop grade processors and the return of mxm graphics cards a lot of people are like okay i got this console and i understand the importance of console i never got into the console versus pc wars i just said if it can play at a reasonable frame rate i don't care that was always my rule if Good. it can play I'm, at a reasonable frame rate i don't care what you play i'm i'm kind of that mindset too but i also don't like being chastised because someone thought it's cool it's basically the same shit as with pc versus mac but that was that whole thing is a whole nother topic in and of itself but uh okay well it's right. good to know you don't know for sure all right now how do you feel about topic two okay we are looking at like gaming oh boy interest now this is an interesting one because when you ask about traditional physical controls versus um the growth of the ai technology well i'm a bit of a dinosaur with my tech because i want the new tech to be pristine i know that it takes three to four generations remember it took remember before the iphone became the de facto phone to get it took about four to five generations and it google and microsoft too. was lazy yeah it took it took android about i'd say android didn't start to hit its stride until android 6 because that's when i switched over because i was still on a windows phone at that time period yeah and windows took just, over by season two yeah yeah, yeah, Windows poorly marketed their device, but a lot of things that you're seeing in phones now, Windows was doing in 2010. So go figure. But back on topic though, the I'm okay with keeping physical controls for the moment because it's tried and true. It's just like when companies have switched to more wireless audio, wireless charging. I kind of get why some people are slow adopters because in technology, there doesn't seem to be a benefit to being an early adopter unless you have stock in the company. I think that's the only time I see that. Right, unless, you, that too, because remember, another example, the foldable phones that have been coming out lately. Yeah, I'm gonna wait until Gen 3, which is, next year or the year after because they're very much first gen products so when i think of um this new form of gaming where 
you're more controlling it. I'm like, uh, can we just let's stick with physical controls. Let's don't abandon physical controls just yet. And let's wait for this new technology to mature. It looks promising. And I like the idea because it's taking VR to another level. Definitely taking VR to another level. And it's interesting. It's sort of like, remember how this all started with Virtual Boy back in the day? Why, why you gotta bring that name up? <sighs> I hate how Nintendo did the Virtual Boy. I hate that it existed. I hate how they did it. It had a lot of good ideas, but it seemed like Nintendo just abandoned the hell out of it, which is why it was a garbage device. So it was sort of like the idea of the Virtual Boy. And now we're getting to the point to where we can do this now. Now, I have seen with some um, computer builds that people have actually used VR. And I see that their HP actually had a VR bag where you put the small desktop tower in the bag and you were doing the VR stuff. And they actually have made a use for it to create a virtual work office which I think is interesting, but as far as physical controls, I'm just gonna say, let's learn from the past and let's not abandon the tried and true technology that already worked. It's sort of like when, headpho when phones started abandoning the headphone jack. I'm sorry, Still mad Bluetooth, about that. I am too. Bluetooth 5 has made some improvements but it's still, and we're both in, well, I look at music, I look at it from the music production end, you look at it from, from the audio production and post-production end of this podcast. No, I'm so looking you at know it from that. the security aspect. Almost that too. nobody, including the companies, encourage or even put password shit into Bluetooth. So no matter how much, how little data you think your headphones actually hold about you, and you're probably right, it doesn't matter. It's linked to something that does hold all of your data. It doesn't need to even get past your lock screen or a two-step verification. It's connected and you're just screwed. And I don't like that. Also, remember, what happens when the world becomes nothing but Bluetooth? Well, the frequencies are on different layers, so they won't interfere with each other. That's not true. Yes, they will. Yeah, exactly. That's that's totally not fucking true. That's common sense. Not you don't even mention, need a tech degree. Yeah, not not even that. Also, factor in what happens when you go to signal dampening or signal redirect or signal uh uh what is it called? I think signal push locations right. where literally there are areas designed or that naturally have make it hard for something to connect wirelessly. Like mm -hmm. fuck that. That's what right. really annoys me. And then on top of that. You, they'll, they'll never get rid of a physical charging port. Even though we have wireless charging, they'll never get rid of a physical charging port, though. They just right. want to market this shit and act like literally, oh, well, this is better. We've moved beyond the cord. Like, no, you haven't, bitch. Also, this still Look, takes up battery now. So now my battery dies faster. The true thing, it, well, let, let's just put it like this, since we're on that topic. Even the small form factor PC still has core. <laughs> Exactly. And it was and it's amazing how you can get so much into some of these small form factor builds. And these are sometimes five to ten pound units, which you remember the computer towers of the past in the nineties. You remember yeah, how heavy them. the old laptops used to be? Yeah, they were at least fifteen to twenty. Yeah, and but even they haven't abandoned a lot of the technologies that are tried, true, and still works. Like I haven't seen a desktop build that's avoided a um, gigabit ethernet port. Ethernet is very important when Wi-Fi will fail, which is why when I tra when I used to travel, this was 2012, I haven't taken a trip in some years and there's a lot of reasons for that. Again, when we get to a more lighthearted personal podcast, I'll get to some personal stories on my travels, but bruh, I made sure I had a I had a RJ45 port on my laptop because I knew one thing about hotel Wi-Fi. Hotel Wi-Fi is garbage. So there are certain ports that we still need. And again, to relate it to this topic, it is promising, but the tech has always been promising. But the promises have not been met. I'm sure you remember the USB-C debacle. Yeah, USB-C's USB biggest debacle. problem is that 
literally the developers and people who utilize it want to bullshit. USB-C but can literally do every single thing that involves a wire going into a computer or a television, but they don't even put a grading system or notification on what type of USB-C cable they fucking have or made. I went through seven exactly. USB-C type cables before I found one that could power a fucking uh, 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 a charging pack. You know how right. fucking weird that is, man? And they all look the same. Yeah, they, you know what? What we found was that every company for smartphones what, and for laptops was not activating USB-C to its full extent because it can run DisplayPort, it can be your charger. HDMI, and it can USB, be H it, yes. audio, better than optical fucking uh 4k high-end resolution data shit like they didn't right. try they didn't activate that or make that standard and then it became even more of a headache when intel and apple made their deal for remember thunderbolt one and thunderbolt two and they still trying to bullshit with it they they are like thunderbolt like when thunderbolt three it took a while for windows laptops to get thunderbolt three because Apple and Intel had a special deal over that, and Apple and Intel were not trying to break that deal because that was one of the things that kept people coming back to the MacBook Pro. The fact that they had that one port that could be the port for everything. We didn't have that equivalent. We only had USB-C 3.0 at that time that Apple was dabbling into Thunderbolt 1 and Thunderbolt 2. So that's why when i look at this second topic i really I, I really like the technology i really like the idea of a game potentially being beamed into my brain hypothetically but i think that the technology is maybe not there yet i think in five years it could be viable but let's just stick with physical controls and i mean even or you know pick a happy medium like gaming gloves like VR gloves. God, no. Why? Try that. Ugh. I'm just saying, let's not go and ditch our physical controls yet because I like the technology that's tried and true. And we've seen the debacles and how the tech world hasn't really. Well, let's just say the tech world has failed us enough, you know? So let's just end that topic with that one. So. You want to go to topic three now? Yeah, price scaling and how to make motherfuckers understand this shit is not okay. Oh, let me tell you, price scaling is bullshit because it's also happening in mobile gaming, like gaming on your smartphone. <laughs> loot boxes yeah, and things like here. that and having to pay to get... I'm like, I do not like the idea of a loot box. Now, okay, if I'm paying to get the ads off, I get it. That's $2. That's not a problem, you know? The app developers have to make something, right? I'm fine with paying for no ads on a game that I like. But if I have to start paying for items to level up and things like that, it's it's irritating. And you know, the, the biggest um, offender of that was EA. EA was big with loot boxes for their no mobile. One. Right, exactly. So no, the thing is, is that eventually enough content creators and enough tech creators have bitched about it to the point to where EA eventually had to cut some of its loot boxes because people were like removing the app. So I think that with this um, DLC scaling, you're going to have to see the same thing, but I'm already thinking that the game is already what? $59.99, right? Why yeah, do I have to like pay that. for a DLC? Why do I have to pay for a downloadable character? Because you want to keep making money off that game. If you want to make money off that game, make a good game. I didn't say this last time we did that topic when it was my turn, mm -hmm. but I feel like it, I should have. I think the easiest way to get rid of this shit, we go and tell the fucking government because that's the only way these bastards are going to learn. And I don't know who you are. Whether it you makes are sense. a game developer or director or you own a company or you answer the shareholders, if you have a shareholder even think this is a good idea and say put it in and your response is hell no because you will get government brought down upon us and you will see the second coming of the ESRB apocalypse. For those of you who don't know what that is because that means that you're under the age of 20, the right. ESRB only exists 
primarily because of two games in, or in, in particular Mortal Kombat and that there mm-hmm. was no regulation on who can and cannot get access to a video game based on the type of game it was. If a game is meant to be scary, if a game was meant to be normal, religious, all of that, there was no age regulations or theme regulation. ESRB only exists because the government on the congressional level <coughs> said, make your own shit or we'll do it for you. And they didn't want that. Or rather, they didn't know if that would be a good idea, so they just came up with the ESRB. Now, here's the thing, though. ESRB has stopped doing what it's supposed to do, and it's trying to cover everyone's ass. Mm-hmm. Now, we've discussed it uh, throughout 2018, because that's when the true apocalypse for gambling games started happening. Just because oh, of one senator man. in Hawaii, then Belgium straight out banned the shit, and other countries are going suit, and then these big companies started saying that, Oh, well, we're going to do it despite what you say. And one of those big companies was like EA or Activision. And yeah, that didn't go over too well for them, which is fucking still like, bitch, they can literally ban your products from the country. The fuck? Exactly. You're not going to get just a fine for doing this. They can ban your fucking product from this country. And that's actually what happened. They're not allowed to do shit in Belgium and it's only getting worse. And also, they got caught lying when they tried to relabel it surprise mechanics at a European yeah. or either a North American hearing. And they said that we think that our, uh, we know that our uh, players like these because it's a surprise because you're never going to know what you're going to get. Like, no, no, that's the problem. Right. If you want to add special edition characters, do that. It's sort of like what Game Freak did to Pokemon Short and Shield. They released significantly less Pokemon than they were supposed to. Now they have an expansion pack, which isn't the National Dex, but it's really the National Dex for an extra $29.99. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just continue to play the simulation Pokemon Showdown. I'm not going to buy Sword and Shield because, first of all, you wanted me to spend $54.99 on Sword and Shield. Now to buy the National Dex back, I have to give you another $30? No. No, that's unnecessary. Because my thing is, for a franchise like Pokemon, your franchise isn't technically the game. The game sells the toys and the anime and everything else related. So the fact that you're having to dip into the game means that your strategy is not working very well somewhere else. But government regulation would help. I agree with you. The thing is, is that Pokemon is a special case. Because see, here's one of the things that people always forget. And then they try to tell me I'm stupid. And I'm just looking at them like, you realize you're showing me what type of person you are, right? There are so many idiots who don't remember that Nintendo does not fully own the Pokemon company and never has. They do not. They do not. They don't. Because when when the Sword and Shield stuff happened, the creator of Pokemon just couldn't say anything. He was like sworn to secrecy. He couldn't talk about how much bullshit it was. But you could see in his eyes during the interviews, this is some bullshit. Yeah, he could have said something, but look, here's the thing. Nintendo does not like they get money. This is actually come on. This was actually said in interviews and statements. Nintendo does not want to ever be at a point where their mobile games are considered the face of the company. And Uh, that's understandable. Here's the problem with that. They need to fucking act like it. Instead of releasing the Nintendo Switch, which has been one of the most popular game devices in God knows how many years. At least 20. Yes, you know what? But a lot of its DNA came from the PlayStation. You remember the PSP and the PSP Vitas, right? They don't give a shit about that. They never they had were, to. But I agree. Sony didn't have to. But No, I said Nintendo. The, Nintendo never had to give a shit about those. They really didn't. But when I look at the Switch and I look at the heritage of the PSPs, I'm like, the PSP was ahead of its time. That's why it didn't do too well. No, it didn't do too well because of two primary reasons. And this is from the guy who owned it and also market research. Part one, Sony has a long history of making proprietary shit from software to physical accessories. And then they overcharge for them and get away with it. And no one fucking likes that. So when they put a UMD on that bitch and I'm playing a portable game now and it has a loading time for it. That was a fucking genuine problem. Also, on top of that. The biggest issue they had was many people were finding games on that system that they didn't want on that system. They wanted them on a console. 
No one wanted anything relating to Final Fantasy that was actually, you know, core content on a PSP. Plus, you didn't have the you, you didn't have the memory or the power to really run that effectively. It was going to be a low time nightmare. Yeah, and on top of that, fucking the quality of the games are reduced. So even if they're good, it's completely muddled down it's, because of the inconsistency. It's scaled down to that. It's Cry scaled down to the screen. Crisis right. Core, if it was on a PlayStation title, would have done so much better. And also, there was no excuse for none of this stuff to ever end up on bigger systems. In fact. If it wasn't for Sony contracts, a lot of this shit would have left the PSP a long time ago. Crisis Core, the only reason Crisis Core hasn't been completed, which is before Crisis and Crisis Core, and I think Final Crisis, but before Crisis and Crisis Core is because of co contracts. Mm -hmm. Before Crisis never come into America because the game is indefinitely locked down to a contract with a Japan-only cell phone company called Do Docomo or something like that. So that uh -huh. entire game that happens before Crisis Core is never coming period or even going to get remade or remastered because they are not easing up on that contract crisis core however is a different situation because there's a mix of they possibly could get sony to let them break that contract if it's even still viable but also mm -hmm. disinterest in doing it because the biggest problem with crisis core is that people were flabbergasted about the story because it was extra shit that seemed dumb but right. at the same time Crisis Core was respected because everything that wasn't relating to stupid parts like Genesis, Angeal, Angeal was okay, but Genesis, you could tell he was only in there because this is when Tetsuya Nomura finally started getting like no guidelines, no mm -hmm. overhead supervision, and people just letting him do what the fuck he wants to, which I don't know why they don't understand that that's a terrible idea, but I guess because they think he's related to things that made the money. He can't possibly have a bad idea, and that's fucking stupid. Anyone can have a bad idea, but I'm not gonna get he, into that. In fact, I could even Hideo Kojima on. had a bad idea. Yeah, he's had multiple bad ideas, but again, I could make a whole different episode about that motherfucker. We will talk about. We need to talk about the problems with the Phantom Pain. No, my and Ground Zero. No, the yes, with, there were some problems that he made. No, I'm talking about problems with him as a fucking person and developer. Like I said, we could do a whole podcast on that shit. Now, I don't care who um, for it. Call me back for that one. Exactly. I and know that, that a lot of people consider Kojima a genius, which for the not. first couple of Metal Gears he was, but toward the end, he was really letting the whole Konami beef just fuck everything over. Not, not and he that. was he a dickhead. He was a dickhead. High. Yeah, he was riding his own high, and half the time he contradicts himself. But then when it comes time he, he, he him really to did. be a man about something put his foot down he pusses out every chance he gets he actually hates david hater i can't believe that you hate david hater when he's the one who made snake the problem no no what happened is plagiarism made snake but that aside the thing is is just that in the case of kojima he steals shit because japan hasn't taught that stealing shit is wrong and people let him get away with it and that's the biggest mistake right there, because when you have a history of stealing shit and making your own version of it, you already set yourself up to be where you are right now, which is when you're in a position where you can't function without stealing shit. And it's not there is no referencing. There is no there is no homage. No, it's it's, it's theft. There's a difference between an homage and theft. If I make right. a superhero that wears a cape and has a letter on his chest. It's an homage to Superman. But if that right. character, everything about him is almost the same except with different phrasing or wording, it's theft. It's me trying to make originality where there was already something there, which defeats the whole fucking purpose. The biggest, the, the thing though is, is that Metal Gear is the most, the one that got the most not notoriety. This man it did. It literally plagiarized Blade Runner to the point where the coats even look the same. He plagiarized fucking what was the other one he played i can't remember what it was but resident evil and silent hill well yeah that was a little bit different though um silent yeah, hill but there was, was always they were very be, similar yeah but he didn't work on that though silent hill was trying to be psychological horror because resident mm -hmm. evil horror was becoming too mainstream so even though konami wanted a horror game the person developing it went out of his way to make them distinguishable and i commend him on that right 
Now, my biggest problem is the fact that he always wants to say he, he wants to make this. He wants to make games that tell stories because he thinks of this as a storytelling medium. He literally is on magazine covers saying video games aren't a proper storytelling medium and acting like the shit never happened. Very, yeah, he is very contradictory. And even when it came down to the last couple Metal Gears after, because he made Metal Gear 4, and then when he was making the prequels to complete the story, when it got to Ground Zero, because I think the last game that I was able to stomach was Peace Walker. I think that the staff around him really was the reason why that worked. Not that Kiefer Sutherland was a bad big boss. I like Kiefer Sutherland and 24 and some of the other stuff that he's done, even designated survivor, it's but he was cliche. not Snake. It, I know. It's he just, was very cliche. Yeah, that, what, what did I mean about stealing and rehashing the same shit? Like, that Kiefer Sutherland, sadly, his whole 90% of his career in the past 10 years is some form of government agent fighting with or against the government. That's, and I'm not saying that. And I'm like, joke. no, 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 you're right. And I'm like, but Solid Snake isn't Jack Bauer. Yeah. Like when they switch the voices, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Are you trying to turn Metal Gear into 24? And then on top of that, this guy wasn't actually that you play the game as spoiler warning, I guess, wasn't actually even Snake in the first place. So my whole was thing a, is, how uh, the fuck do they even have the same voice like that? Right. Right. And here's the here's the really fucked up thing. In Japan, the person that voiced um Young Big Boss was the exact same person that voiced big ball that that voice solid snake in the japanese versions of metal gear but then there was a change in the american version and david Hayter talked about how bu how much bullshit it was i'm like well, the reason why it know. sold so well was because he had a great vocal performance in that game yeah you you give him voice actors too much credit but to be fair metal gear has always been a step ahead of a lot of people when it came to quality voice acting now here's the thing. It though. was Kojima doesn't like it when his scripts are fucked with or his ideas are tampered with with by someone in North America, anyone who's not in Japan. It's weird and stupid. As far back, literally, as Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation, this insecurity and stupid petty behavior showed up. The actual translator was underpaid and rushed to translate Metal Gear Solid, but he made the game make more sense because there were a lot of things that didn't follow any true logic within it right and yeah. konami went back and re-released that version for japan because it was so good so at some point in time he developed an issue with this then when the second game came around there was even more bullshit and issues but he said hey can i directly talk or get some type of contact with uh the people writing the story because there are some clarifications or issues i want to address with them and try to get fixed and konami said no but konami didn't actually say no what happened was Kojima didn't want to talk to him. But again, these are people that are helping you make your shit coherent or make more sense. David Hayter, if you remember, was originally t attached to write or direct the Metal Gear Solid movie. He was, yeah, he was attached to write. Right. Because he also wrote the first X Men Fox movie. But here's the thing though when he started telling him while he was in production, hey, there are some continuity issues or plot holes with some of these scripts in relation to the story in Metal Gear Solid as early as the first version of Metal Gear Solid 2. Right. He wouldn't listen to him. So when he found out that David Hayter was going to be involved with writing or being involved with trying to get a director attached to the Metal Gear Solid movie, he willfully ignored and did not talk to anyone involved on the American side with the project and he didn't he stopped commenting on it or he never commented on it and later on one of the people who did the voice direction was on the staff in japan said hey look i'm not supposed to tell you this but he just secretly hates you first off motherfucker if you secretly hate him why you keep hiring him don't don't get right. me wrong the, the 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 whole concept of the japanese hiring north americans to do voice acting is still weird and sometimes it just comes out stupid because they don't want to listen to common sense from the people who speak the language. But if you don't like him, why the fuck did you hire him or get him hired to make sure he came back for like seven games? Yes, you kept bringing him back until Peace Walker and then you went in a different direction. Exactly. So... And of the, of the Metal Gear games, Peace Walker was the most coherent out of both. It made the most sense. To me, the one that made the most sense 
was the one he un is annoyed with the most, which is uh, the Metal Gear Solid uh, remake on the GameCube. And I'm going to tell you why. Because oh, I like Twin Snake, but, but but Twin Snakes was great. What are you talking about? What, yeah, what is he talking about? Kojima hates it. Uh, or he, he says he, he doesn't feel like it was up to his standard, which fucking bullshit statement even back then. But here's the thing. Um, literally, my why I like it is the fact that that giant audio text 2D dialogue screen between Colonel and Snake, which uh -huh. is supposed to happen before the game starts. Right. They made it a cutscene, but then when they realized there wasn't enough in the budget to animate the lip movements, they still kept the motion capture and all of the intensity and passion from the actors recording it, but they chose to show it as if it was from an angle looking through a camera lens, which mm -hmm. that does happen in the game at some points in time anyway. And yeah. it, it worked. Also, remember, this is a game that's meant to be replayed constantly to find out new things or to try to unlock Kodak conversation just because you have a curious nature. That game was never intended right. to be super long. Nope. And they did a good job, in my opinion. He don't fucking like it. I mean, think of think of Metal Gear Solid 2. Remember when they came out with Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance where they had to so add here's the, thing. the Snake Basically, chapter? Here's the thing. Kojima doesn't actually have a lot of say-so with Metal Gear. What happens is they give him a budget and they give him money and he tells them when he thinks he can get it done and that's what happens. However, Konami determines ultimately what he does and doesn't work on. He's been trying to get away from that game ever since he realized that people like snake more than Raiden. so when konami you know, said you're gonna try go to make this. Raiden a thing and i don't ugh, ugh. yeah yeah and then he keeps lying about why he what the reasoning why he did it at first he said it was to subvert fan expectation and then he said it was because he wanted to make fun of all that he had built up by having a joke type character being charged like literally he can't keep a content a consistent statement then when you get to three, oh, this is going to be my last game, the last one that I do, so I'm going to try to put as much in it as possible. But then he goes into the past, but it's still Snake when he could have got another person. Then after that, we go into four. Okay, this is going to be my last Metal Gear. And that literally took five, six years. It was supposed to be day one on the PlayStation 3. Or year I one. Figured. And look right. what happened. It came out like a year before the PlayStation 4. 2010, I think, was when Gun of the Patri Guns of the Patriots came out. Yeah, and then he it said, oh, yeah, David's my favorite character because he. I feel like he's a character that grows with me along the series. Like, what the fuck? That is not you what you said. You like that, man. That is not what you said as early as three years ago. He was very <laughs> passive aggressive to David Hayter. I no, 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 really different. Remember, David, uh, oh, David, right. Hader's name, David Hayter is somewhat partially based off of, besides the main character from Escape from L.A., he's partially based off of uh, David snake because david's name and solid snake's name right. is david so he was referring to david snake not david hater but oh okay yeah but, but at the same time it still made no sense because he said that he fucking don't like the character you feel like i've gone as far as i can with this character but you're saying he's been your favorite character the whole series like dude you tried to get rid of him in the second game the fuck and you tried to stop focusing on him with the third game when you went back to the past to focus on Big boss. He annoyed the, original. the fuck out of Sakurai because they were friends to get Snake in Super Smash Brothers. Snake was never supposed to be in Smash Brothers. And that also goes into another whole level of worms because Sakurai has been lying and saying, overall, I can't pick the characters. I don't pick the characters. Nintendo tells me who I can put in and who I can't. Like, nah, so then why the fuck is Snake there? Because you and Kojima both said he ran into you at E3 and he just bugged you to put the character in and you did it. Nah, that's not what happened. But you see what I'm saying, though, right? There's no right. consistency. There is, yeah. When you think, yeah, that's the thing about um, Hideo. Like he's never really been consistent, and he's a bit of a passive aggressive man. He's not a bit. He's very a fucking, passive aggressive. He's a he's a pervert. He's terrible. Who's he's, he's a, a terrorist. Petty, he's a petty pervert who's passive aggressive. But because Konami treated him like shit, people want to treat him like he's some angel. Like no, I, first off, I've seen this dude's Twitter. And he says disturbing things and acts like he didn't. First off, the reason all of his characters, female characters, look smutty is because he just wants them to. It's not because there's some a reason to it in the story. It's because he wants them to. And then he tries to tell him, you'll be feel ashamed for your misdeeds and insulting me for quiet. First off, there wasn't actually a reason for quiet to be the way she was. Oh, uh, quiet was... 
like I said, I watched. If we her, start talking about Ground Zeroes and the Phantom Pain, we'll be here first all night. Off, I don't, I don't really give a shit about the Ground Zero. I never gave a shit about it. I started with Phantom Pain, but I watched her literally beat Metal Gear Solid Five. She played it on Twitch. The first, e first episode of it. First wow. thing she said is she's embarrassed about how her character was portrayed. Yeah. Also, let's not forget Metal Gear Solid Four. What happens when you take them out with the tranquilizer? They'll chase you around in a special weird mini game dream sequence that makes no sense. And if you turn on the camera, they'll do sexy poses. And which confetti comes out make, of them if you shoot them. What? Which was unnecessary when you think of the context of the game. And then on top of that, every single fucking female character in that game who was a boss, because literally every, every boss in that game except one is female, they have right. this horrendous backstory about how they did terrible things to survive or how they're mentally destroyed and broken up. But then here you are sexualizing them. So there's no like it's the biggest problem I have with Japan is that they want to be taken seriously, but then they do smutty shit with their characters. The closest one I've seen come to being taken seriously is Kingdom Hearts. And look at that story. The women in there are never meant to be objectified. But let's be honest, a part of me feels like that's primarily not because of no more not having a history of designing smut bullshit, but it's because Disney is always looking over that shoulder yeah disney does not mm -hmm. disney yeah so yeah let's get back on topic and don't worry i'll edit and shrink that part out that'll just be a you and me thing cool cool How no 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 that is we cool we can stop these motherfuckers from dlc price scaling i'm going with what you said well what basically to make a long story short on that topic so we can go to the next one is Government probably does need to step in because these game companies don't believe fat meat is greasy at this point. <laughs> Man, I've not heard that in a long time. Man, that was the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, you do know fat meat is indeed greasy, right? Like, that's not a thing. It actually <laughs> is. <laughs> So I do think that that's what you're probably going to have to do, but gamers are probably going to stop fucking with the games anyway. So it's both of them. You get both of those, this is going to stop really quickly. You know the real dumb part about Yakuza shit? Bro. Wow. Half of the DLC that they're trying to make DLC was shit that was already a feature in like the past six games. That's what makes it even worse. Like, that is awful. Okay, now for topic four, you know, this is like the, the Hail Mary of why I wanted you here. When it comes yeah. to the virtual ch virtual chat rooms mm -hmm. being dangerous, like, is there even a way to prevent it from fucking up children and kids? You already know how it is. Half these motherfuckers on the internet, they're not being supervised by their parents. That's why they say stupid shit when they're like f as early as five or four years younger than me. There's nothing wrong with being a slut. It's like, are you stupid? Are you genuinely stupid? Don't hate me because I'm a sex worker. Do you have sex for money? No. So what you're doing isn't illegal? No. So why are you calling yourself a sex worker? But the internet said, yeah, the internet's not a dictionary, dumbass. The internet doesn't know what it's talking about in terms of the sex worker and prostitution topic. Thank you. And Thank you. We can talk about that another day because Las Vegas, Nevada has actually made it a bit of a respectable business but you really have to look at how they've done it and you have to look at how it's treated in some other european union countries and other countries abroad but that is a whole separate topic america really. struggles stupid with that millennials, topic. stupid millennials jumped onto a bandwagon and didn't understand the bandwagon and then they decided to use their feelings instead of logical reasoning, analytical ability, understanding, critical thinking, empathy, and facts. No, that's what, that's what I'll say until I'm dead and I'm blue in the face. North America, the North American concept of sex worker doesn't actually include sex workers nine times out of ten. And they fucked it, it up. They fucked it up. actually doesn't. Yeah, they because... like, people trying to champion for rights, first off, they don't understand the proper way to do it. Yelling on the internet does not do that. And you're not going to get a politician who's probably going to respect that shit for a long time. The best you're going to get is decriminalization, which has happened. And in fact, people keep bullshitting with the European unions, but European unions didn't actually legalize a lot of places. They decriminalized. And much like with weed, it's what I keep trying to make people understand. Decriminalization is not making something legal. Also, it's not. even if they did make it legal, which that ain't going to happen. 
Uh, let's not until forget. the government and pharmaceutical companies can figure out how to profit off marijuana in the same ways that they have with these medication cocktails. Uh, I was talking about prostitution. That's still, it. But yeah. Oh, my bad. But no, 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 no. Just like, it's add on similar. To that one. Yeah, there are some similarities on how they're perceived, but it's the same situation. Decriminalizing something or declaring something unlawful instead of criminal doesn't mean you can't get in trouble. Right. Like you can still get in trouble because there are states that have laws on the books that you can get arrested for certain sex acts with your consenting spouse. And let's not forget that, you know, uh, the 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 freedom to be pro a prostitute and, you know, as a living career choice does not mean that there are no ramifications if it was made legal. Because first and foremost, let's not forget, um, sometimes prostitutes don't stop their career even after they get locked up because quite literally uh they get registered somewhere right. now being a prostitute doesn't make you a registered sex offender at least i don't i'm not sure that it automatically does if you get caught and i'm not going to say that it does but obviously if it's you know a bible a bible state in my but here's the thing prostitutes ain't fucking in, in, in a lot of hotels and motels bro plus hotels and motels well motels don't give a shit hotels they actually don't want that and they openly there have been laws that have been made on the federal level about sex prostitution within a hotel and shit like that. They don't want the attention because it's bad for business, you know, but here's right. the thing. They don't care about where they're fucking. Sometimes they don't care if they're married or not. So if you fuck a prostitute and she said, okay, Hey, let's go behind this dumpster. What happens when you get ready uh, registered as a sex offender? Like, you know, that's what you don't mm. understand. It's like, some of these people, even in because the they're having just sex coming, in public. Yeah, it's like here's the thing. You have to understand. Some of these people, they weren't right in the head, and they shouldn't be doing the job that they have. That's that's any job. And first off, I was in the military. Let me tell you, there are some people who shouldn't be in the military, despite how quote unquote athletic they look, because they lack the ability to understand the concept of empathy. They are a psychopath, or they literally are only here because they think that. They can hang around a bunch of fellow racists and, and neo-Nazis and shit and that they're going to secretly, quote unquote, take over the government from minorities and shit. And I got that guy kicked out, by the way. But the whole Good point is, is that. Thank you. The whole point is, is that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Or if you can do something doesn't mean that you're mentally stable or not fucked up enough to be able to do it. I can promise you, promise you, 90 percent of the people that you see doing porn, they fucked outside. They fucked in a place they weren't supposed to because it was illegal or in a situation where if they were caught, they could get put on a sex offender list or a child sex offender list, depending on who came around the corner at the wrong time. Because I got some story. I got some really strange stories of people. There was a guy that was caught who was drunk, who was caught urinating outside a dumpster. Police caught him and slapped him with the um, sex offender label, even though he was just pissing. Yeah, it's public in, dumpster. When you are it's public, public when you are exposed in public, it's fair game. Yeah. And they don't care. In fact, if look, I don't got to tell you which special website you can go to to look up smut, but let's be honest, you can just put in Google. And if you look right. up, you can put in the words sex outdoors and you will see or amateur sex or just sex in public. It exists. People right. are doing it and they act like there's nothing wrong with them or that if you don't pay money for their porn, you're somehow an asshole. I'm like, bitch, you're literally committing a felony and you ain't that fine. You are not fine enough to warrant your porn being paid for. True. True. Yeah. Like I said, because the porn I'm industry all for, has no standards. It's, and it's that simple. It really doesn't. I'm all for considering the idea of legalization, but in the time that we're at now, a huge political and cultural shift would have to happen. And, and I don't not. think we're there yet. We're not the sad get thing there. is, I don't think we're there. And I, I know we're not there and we're never going to get there. And it's not because well, clashing ideals and don't nobody want to listen to each other because everyone's in the age of you have to be saying the same thing as me or fuck you. No, it's because they are on a platform that they cannot manage because they're fucked. No matter for every one, one prostitute porn star that's got a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, there's two fucking in an alley or letting themselves get drunk and supposedly date raped, even though they wanted it, which now fucks up that male perception of, huh, I guess they all really do want it no matter what happens or what state they're in. Fuck that bullshit, by the way. And then on top of it, there's also yes. the ones that they were literally Jeez. having sex at a wrong age and it literally messed up their brain. They can't process that sensation 
correctly and but i forget what it's called actually it was a psychiatrist that told me about that shit too it's like people well no just that, that, that does sex. happen with some people who were sexually assaulted and just to make a good point no no no, no the, not um, the assault people like they just had sex underage and it messed with up their development mind you it was consensual so their brain values or or value sex in in a different way or the worst possible way like and this is just one example uh leia falcon claims that she's a champion of the porn industry she wants to see more people get in the porn industry and she thinks that there's nothing wrong with the porn industry leia falcon was literally having grown men sneak into her parents house when she was 14 and 15 pedophiles and fucking her now and then there's the other thing about porn stars who are no longer porn stars anymore like Dude, yeah, they go and join Mia, organizations. Mia Khalifa. Yeah, it's, Mia it's crazy. Khalifa. They go and join organizations has, um, where they literally Mia... tell people to not join the industry. I'm like, what the fuck? This has got to be the only business I've ever seen in my life, besides tobacco, literally besides tobacco, where it literally is creating people who come out of it just to go and try to get it removed and regulated. What the fuck? It's crazy because I actually saw some of Mia Khalifa's um, in three years of porn, I only made $12,000. I'm like, even I made more than that going to school. And I'm poor. Well, see, here's the thing. She's so, an idiot, though. So you have to factor that in. The contracts. You got to consider the contracts that you signed. And no, no, no. Some people she's... just do a commission-based system. But no, that's not the problem. The problem is she thought there were rules and standards. So there was a lot of shit that the basic porn star is supposed to do or be able to do. And she would not do them. So she throw an attitude and a shit fit. But the thing is, is that even after she got out the porn industry, she backpedaled on everything she ever said, even not just in porn, but as her character. Like she said, she was slut pride. She's representing sluts and shit like that. And then she tried to backpedal. And then when she tried to actually get, you know, notable attention for anything that's not porn. When she, when it would be brought up that she used to do porn and people would mention like, you know, despite her background, she knows a lot about, you know, college athlete level sports. She is genuinely into it and a hobbyist. And people say, you know, don't just treat her like she's just a porn star or just a retired porn star. She throws a tantrum about that. Like literally throws a tantrum. So unfortunately, she's society never gonna hasn't escape got it. to that. Right. Society hasn't got to the point to where we can look at people in multiple ways. Sometimes no, we are just, just she's still an people. asshole. Right. That's what I'm saying. Look. Look, let's be real. I saw some of her stuff when she was on um, talking with Gilbert Arenas and she made me roll my eye frequently. Yeah. Not my greatest example, but she's you stupid. do find a lot of, you, she don't know what she's doing. You find a lot of examples like that. And like I said, we're just not at a point in society where that, where we, we can hope for only decriminalization currently. Do I want legalization? Sure. But well, here's the sad truth. On that one. Fair, but here but but just listen to this. The federal government will not legalize it until they can figure out how to make money off. Same I with disagree marijuana, on same one with simple purpose. Else. They already What's that? knew how to make money off of it, but they chose not to once we got around the eighteenth century and going forward. So it's not oh, like you're they talking don't about know. historically. Yeah, the yeah. government knows right, right, right. how to make profit from it. It's not that. The problem is, is that, do you really think the government is going to be stable? If that happens, fuck no. Think about it. How many politicians cheating on their wives? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. Just, would you trust somebody with nuclear launch codes who can't keep his dick to himself? No. Would you not trust somebody with the highest office in the CDC if the only thing he wanted to do when he came into work was try to fuck all the women he worked with? Uh, I'd be surprised that he's not in jail for all types of um, sexual harassment charges. Oh yeah, and let's not forget, <laughs> the entire retail world not only hates the porn industry, they literally go out of their way to remove anything in relation to it. Let's not forget, if you do smut online, there's a bunch right. of jobs that will not take you even if you never had sex for money. Morality clauses, too. There are a lot of, especially when you get to southern states, there are a lot of jobs that have morality yes, clauses. Yes, because it's, it's, well, the South, I won't speak on the South, but the thing is, is that the point of a business is they want to make money. And when you're in a society that cares more about money than anything else, or well, money and 
making money image and, and then image and then below those fucking somewhere on that totem pole at the bottom where it should be here's what's gonna happen anything that happens with you is a liability now i've worked at a few companies where i got into assistant management or just administration so i'm in the same room maybe not the same conference meeting but the same room as people in hr and pr and shit like that so sometimes i get to ask questions or i get to see when people who came for a job interview aren't going to get taken and right. if you done smut work you're a liability and it, it makes sense and here's why i say just decriminalization here's the problem you can't be trusted or anything you say about an incident can't be trusted and it could end up costing the company more money than you made them or it is to pay you or the person up against you up against so if you're a porn star or you're just a noted a noted a noted slut you will mm -hmm. fuck everybody in that motherfucking building now, someone sexually harasses you. Now, and the only reason you don't want to fuck him is because you decided he's ugly. That's it. The only reason you don't want to fuck him is because he's ugly to you. Now, and you try to report him for sexual harassment. What happens when they bring up slash find out, hey, you have a history in porn? He can say, yeah, well, she that's going to mess that up. She wanted it before or A, she started it or B, we already fucked already. What? What? No, we didn't. Can you prove it? No. But you did fuck about 40 other people in this building that has 80 workers. So what you want me to do? Like, literally, it's a choice that can ruin your whole fucking life or the, your whole entire future. And also, most porn stars that retire, the really famous ones, they still mm -hmm. know how to fucking manage their money. And they go and return to it. Phoenix Marie said she quit because she felt like she was done. Not because I've done everything there is in porn. No, because she felt like she couldn't do any more porn. Right. And then what? A year and a half later, what happened? She was right back in it. They don't learn basic adult shit. And the ones that do, they're not going to teach it to other porn stars. And them other porn stars aren't going to listen. Because you got to understand, a lot of these new people that come in, they come from the background is, I should be able to do whatever I want. It's like, no, you shouldn't. Not, and it has nothing to do with porn. No one should be able to do whatever the fuck they want to. Because first off, absolute freedom can create complete destruction. Because if someone wakes up and decides they don't want to get away with shit and they turn into an Epstein, what then? That man yeah, was getting caught. Yeah, that's scary. He was getting caught for decades. But why didn't he go to jail until recently? Because his money couldn't save him. He got in front of a judge that didn't give a fuck. That's all it was. So imagine a whole nation of people who are literally sociopaths and amoral and selfish. Nah, fuck that. Period. Like, it has nothing to do with porn. If you literally think you should literally be allowed to do whatever the fuck you want to, you already fucked yourself because you don't understand basic concepts of life. The reason you can't do whatever the fuck you want to do is because you inevitably, inevitably <clears throat> make shit worse for someone who isn't you or you affect other people who don't want to be involved with your shit. If you want to do you whatever you want to do, don't leave your house. Don't get on the internet. But that's not going to happen. You're going to go on the internet and you're going to leave your fucking house. And the minute you do that, you're going to have to adhere to other people's rules. Theoretically, now I've not done this. I just want to say that this is a hypothetical. If someone told me they can do whatever the fuck they want to do to me and I beat the living shit out of this person, I don't think they wanted me to beat their ass. I think they want to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. But now I've broken their logic. Well, here's the problem. Your reality isn't based off of reality. It's based off of your personality. So really, anytime I see this shit, I was like, you realize you're showing me what type of person you are. You're not showing me a belief that you have. You're showing me what type of person you are. And they don't understand the concept. So then they get mad at me and say that, you know, I'm I'm automatically like the black guy that voted for Trump and shit. You know, that, that mythical unicorn Negro that no one wants to acknowledge exists or actually respect and don't have to respect. And then you also want to tell me I have to respect you. So you've insulted me. You insulted my way of thinking, but you want me to respect everything you're doing. Like, this, the sooner North American young people understand hypocrisy and self-awareness and being humble, the better off a society we're going to be. But the problem is, it's not going to happen. We're at a point where they could literally run and hide on the internet forever and stay how they are indefinitely. And it's depressing. I literally have friends who do nude modeling and they think they're a sex worker and I have to explain to them like, no, you're, you're, you're not. No, not because I don't feel like you're a sex model. worker or because of my opinion, you're not a sex worker. Like you don't understand the difference between 
learning the definition of words versus the internet making shit up. I still have to tell people that <laughs> retard is an actual word. It wasn't just some derogatory statement that was thrown at disabled people. In fact, it wasn't actually a derogatory statement directed at disabled people. It was a derogatory statement for people being stupid, which that's how insults work. But no, it's an actual word. It's an object that is in motion while impeding its own motion. That is what right. retarding actually is. And even when I use it correctly in a sentence and I'm not insulting someone or referring to a human being, I will see stupid people uh, that try to tell me I shouldn't say that or that's disrespectful. Like, no, this is I'm using it the, the correct way. And then they still try to tell me, oh, well, you shouldn't do that. It's like, no, you shouldn't be saying what you're saying. The fuck? You're trying to tell me what to do, but you don't want to be told what to do. Hypocrisy, selfishness, delusions. If we just worked on these as early as like first grade, I promise you, man, we would start looking like Copenhagen. We would start looking like those, those uh, east, uh, northeast European and North European countries that have this whole entire cre credo of literally, you're not the most important in the world, and the world doesn't revolve around you. It's a very, very long statement, but basically that's what it means when translated. It basically says, remember, you're not Kanye West. And Kanye West shouldn't be Kanye West, but I could rag on him for millenniums. You, uh, you you know, that was one of the first true adults I ever hated in my life was fucking Kanye West, and he's only gotten worse. Oh, man. Yes, he has. But I will just implore to you that, unfortunately, the reason why we have some of these problems is really because of what U.S. culture teaches and how that's reinforced. Like, we reinforce that type of individualism and things like that. And yeah, that's and why that's you sad. have that problem. It's totally sad. If you stop and think okay. about it, the main reason, and this, I'm going to just say this before we get back into it. The main okay. reason that we're just now having this robust acceptance and, you know, tolerance as well as admittance to mental disabilities is because... We spent 30, 40 years trying to tell people you need to go and hide it if something is fucked up mentally. <laughs> right. That's it. That's the only reason. It's because that started being frowned on instead of being praised. But yeah, go ahead and topic four. I am so sorry about that detraction. Dude, we, that dude, sounds like okay. a good topic we can cover. Yeah, because you got another podcast. You and me ain't sat down and talked about shit in literally <laughs> over a decade. So right. getting caught up like this was going to happen. Right. So but hey, back on this so. <laughs> fair, but back on this topic, um, man, uh, you know, virtual, you know, virtual chat rooms, even when I was growing up, I didn't, even when I was growing up, I didn't have virtual chat rooms. I only had, you know, message boards through V bulletin and live journal. Yahoo. <laughs> That's all I had. And Yahoo chat. Yeah, I did have that too. But when I was a little old, when I was like, 12, 13, 14, really it was message boards for me and live journal. So those were the things and those were the people that I used to talk to, but I was very, very, um, what's the word, careful because I kind of knew from my parents that the internet was a very, very weird place. Paranoid. I don't think you, yeah, I don't think you have a lot of parents educating the children about the internet I agree. or... You also have kids that are just like saying, screw that and just going into there. But I do think that parents do actually need to step up and monitor. I'm not saying that they need to be dictatorial Nazis. I'm just saying, just make sure you know what your kid is doing and equip them to make the proper decision like an actual human. I don't see a lot of that with parenting. I see more, I see a lot, I don't see a lot of that. And I think that you need that for a topic like the internet, because now with the easy accessibility of gaming, that's where a lot of kids get in their first chat rooms. And that's where they start to learn about the horribleness of the internet. You mean swearing? Not just swearing, horribleness. <laughs> like, swearing is light compared to what I've seen some kids um because I was um watching one of my homegirls twitch screens she's like 37 man there was like a 14 or a 15 year old in her room she kicked him out she's like do your parents even know you're in here the kid was adamant about no I play at my dad's and 
it was a very long story, but she said, no, I'm not going to add you as a friend because you're a teenager. I'm almost 40. What does that look like? Imagine if that was some other weirdo and not my friend. That's exactly you see what I'm saying? And that's why it gets really, really strange. I do think that we just need, I do think that um, it's really corny, but I don't see a lot of education in kids on the internet because kids are learning about the internet more quickly now because I hate to say it, a lot of parents just give their kid an iPad just to get them out of their faces, which I understand the stress of being a parent among other things, but even when you're giving them the iPad just to give yourself a bit of break time, make sure that you have blocks on that if you know that your kid can't handle that. And make sure it's something that they can't hack. Because kids get really adept with hacking. Fuck, that is, damn, that's one I keep forgetting about. Children can learn easily to hack. You can right. literally type in how to hack into Google and you can learn how to hack. Right. I agree with you, and I think that that's what we have to do. I mean, for younger, for younger, but let's let's look at adolescents and young adults. I really would be more concerned about adolescents and younger adults, mainly because of the fact that they're very, very impressionable, and a lot of kids who weren't popular and well, let's just well, let's just put it like this: because there's um so much social media that's rampant. The bullying that used to happen when we were kids doesn't happen like that anymore. It's yeah, a 24 it's hour affair. Eternal. Yeah, it's almost It's a 24 eternal. hour eternal because of the internet. So I think that when you look at when you have kids that are being bullied and who are in that situation and they go to these chat rooms, that's where they can become very easily impressionable and develop a lot of terrible ideologies about themselves and people. Consider the incel movement. A lot of those guys were the born bullied in front ones. Of a computer. Well, not just born in front of a computer, but definitely bullied. But that's where they get some of their MRA bullshit from. And I mean, I'm I'm a guy that's for equity in society because there's still various various levels of oppression. But when you think of the men's rights activists. I just think of the guy that eats cheese curls and plays video games all day. <laughs> no offense, like when I think of MRAs, but that's what a lot of these adolescents and young adults are learning from. And because they're so impressionable, that stuff sticks with them. And when they finally get to therapy and see us, it's a lot of work we have to undo to see how they develop that way. I mean, are there pros to virtual socializing? Sure, there are pros because well, no, let me for add, a lot, it, it's phrased a little bit different. It's more of, are there more pros or cons? To that? I would say that there's more con. Me too. Oh my god, more cons than pros because it's not like it was back in the day when I was just trolling anime forum. <laughs> Very different from now. Like you were just really having. Like the worst thing you'd have is like a terrible anime debate and you'd get blocked over. You say this Gundam, they said this Gundam was better than that Gundam, but they blocked you. And it was, that doesn't happen anymore. That doesn't happen anymore. But there is a lot of, there is a lot of good support groups on the internet, but I will say that for virtual socializing, especially in terms of gaming, yeah, more cons than pros. Definitely more negatives, definitely more chances for kids to grow with a lot of fucked up ideology that they make their identity because when the computer is off, they're the bottom of the barrel at their high school or they're not very popular in college. So there are more cons than pros. It's not like it was years ago. Now, see, does someone piggyback on the incel? I don't, let me just say, I don't empathize with them. I don't sympathize with them. I don't hate them. I think maybe I respect them, but on a very, very small level. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they didn't realize they were digging their own grave. I, that's right. the only, whatever you would call solace. I would, you got to let go of the button, bro. 
Oh, my bad. That's the only solace I would give to them if I'm even using that correctly in this sense. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you stand in front of a computer and you're a male, mm -hmm. we already know it's been documented for literally thousands of years that inherently men are supposed to go and court the female. Men right. are supposed to court the female. And I'm not saying that we should do that or that we are obligated. I'm saying that is a societal expectation and a societal assumption. So you have to deal with this at some point in time in your life. But here's the problem. The kid that's born in front of the computer, the kid that talks to girls because they like the same shit as him growing up, who's still in front of the computer, in front of the game system, in front of the TV. He doesn't go out and hang with his friends. He calls his friends to go and fucking play video games with him, not go to the malls, not go where there are going to be females when, when you can see females as a teenager versus a nightclub or some shit. That, that kid, mm -hmm. when he gets to college, he's not going to go to a fucking bar. He's going to go hang out at the dorm with a frat that has a party and has game systems, and he's going to see the girls, and then he's going to fear them. The problem is with insoles is they fear women, not because they think they're better or superior or, or unapproachable, but they feel like they are they should fear them because they don't have any frame of reference for females other than mom. So the and guy that is a huge part of the problem. And, it, and if you've met some of these incels, bro, they're not actually super obese all the time, sat in front of a screen, got zits all over their face. And listen, they're going to have a terrible personality with their girlfriends. I, I automatically assume if an incel gets a girlfriend, that's going to be the first of many trial and errors before he stops fucking up or acknowledge right. he's a fuck up. But the thing is, is that they're scared of them. It's more like a female phobia or a relationship phobia because right. they mentally beat themselves down before they approach the girl. So they, they're not even so much stuck in the friend zone as they bought land in the friend zone and put a house on that land. Right. But that being said, you know how you stop being scared of a girl? Do the same shit the other guys did when they was in grade school, high school, and shit like that. You talk to them, and if they giggle too much, that usually is an indicator of you're going in the right direction. I hate to say it. It even happens now, and I'm a grown man. I'm a middle-aged man. Seriously. Sometimes I look at these girls, and I'm like, I don't think I have a shot, or I'm not thinking that our relationship is going to be of a, you know... A right. serious, a serious. It's not. It's going to be nothing more than platonic. But if they mm -hmm. giggle too much and they're looking at me, I feel like that's their universal way of saying, "Please ask me out," because they themselves aren't taught taught this shit. There, it's very rare for it's still rare for women to be the initiator when the man doesn't have. And you can call this a stereotype, but it's a statistic. The lower the income, or the more similar the income between the male and the female the less odds of initiation of a relationship of any kind. However, the more popular and rich the male male is, the more odds of it. Yeah. Will Smith walks into a I room in his prime. He has no girlfriend. He walks into a room in his prime and there's the guy there who's been eyeballing this girl. He's known her for his whole life and he feels like she would go on a date with him, eventually be his wife, shit like that. And she's even hinted that, you know, I wouldn't mind a relationship. Will Smith walk in this room, in that room, and she basically throws herself at him, asking, she sucked the dick, just anything like that. How is that going to make that guy feel? Right. You know, so like I said, I, 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 I somewhat respect them because they didn't put themselves in that position on purpose. Parent, parents not paying attention, but also bravery not being a factor is some of the biggest things but at the same time why why is it that women are just like expected to not not and this is me heavily heavily editing but why are they just expect to stand somewhere and look pretty and then get somebody w what happened to putting in effort but then you know it, it wasn't sexist but a couple of my female friends that they actually talked to me in their reasonable adults they said okay what you're saying isn't sexist, but it comes off as sexist based on how you're phrasing it. The issue is that the way we're taught or inherently guess how to initiate is by doing that, by putting on the makeup, by trying to get the dude's attention. But that's where it stops. Getting the attention is not closing the deal. It's not asking him out. It's getting the attention. The problem is, is that we don't know or aren't inherently taught where to go from there. And also, we actually, it's a proven statistic, 
on all, uh, on many many age groups, women fear rejection almost three or four times more than men. Men, we kind of expect it, but for them, I guess, and I don't I don't know what the multiplication would translate to because these are feelings. Maybe it ruins their week or it turns into a soul crushing experience or something like that. I don't know. I've never been a woman, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna pretend that I can say for sure what they think. I feel like that would be offensive. Or at least that would be intentionally offensive versus accidental. So if you're already born into the genetic statement, the genetic scientific proven fact of your emotional section, the amygdala will develop faster or it will be more active throughout your life than the rest of your uh, brain. Even after the uh, even after the brain finishes developing at 30, your emotions potentially could still be the deciding factor in a situation where logic should be applied and reasoning should be applied. And you're taught by society and your friends, you want to get a boy, look pretty, put this on, do that, blah, 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 blah. I can understand not thinking you should initiate, but here's the thing. When you start hitting 30, 40, or you're just in your mid twenties and you know, you're hiding from your girlfriends and guys that you've never had a boyfriend and shit like that. You're not helping the situation. These are the people you should go to and say, hey, how do I get a boyfriend? And I swear to God, and this is how you- Or know, social you skills training with therapists. Yeah, but that costs money. And, and then also- Not in college. A lot of colleges thing. cover that. Yeah, that's true. And this is the thing I say also, and this is how you know if your friend actually gives a shit or if they believe you when you say that. If they say, just be yourself, don't smack them. Don't hate them. Don't ever go to them for advice ever again. Because if you are in your 20s, in your 30s, and you ask your friend, hey, look, I'm a girl. I don't know how to talk to boys about relationship. How do I do something other than smile and giggle at them? Shit like that. And they say, just be yourself. Don't go to them for shit involving a serious conversation or situation. Because they're telling you they don't give a fuck at that point. They're telling you they don't give a fuck. Or if you're one of those people who've only ever had one girl or one boyfriend your whole life, and then he breaks up with you or it doesn't work out and you don't know how to talk to dudes anymore, you need to fucking learn. Because first off, when you get to a certain age group, dudes, stop assuming you're on the market. Period. Whether there's a ring or not, we stop assuming you're on the market. Right. And I don't know that exact number because I don't think anyone's ever done any analytical research on it but the thing is is that you need to understand two basic things you need to not be shallow and superficial if you don't want a man who's shallow and superficial that has to carry over it can't be one-sided i think it was good morning america or some daytime talk show bullshit that they needed a filler so they had a science a science uh analytical data situation going on they stated that women are having a harder time finding men when they get higher income but it but men don't and the reason that they say that the, men, uh, the women were having issues is because they're trying to get men of a similar income level. And it's like, well, there's the problem right there. It's not the men. It's the fucking women. And it's not every woman who has higher income. It's, if you think that if you make $80,000 a year, at a minimum, he has to make $80,000 a year. That's why you fucked up. Because here's the thing. You shrank your pool. Yeah. And it's worse than that, too. Men with higher incomes are oftentimes married. Like... One of the biggest fears about a relationship is being able to afford a marriage for men. Once they get the girl that they like, they want to make sure that they have certain caveats before they pop the question. Not just the mental state, unless they're, you know, an idiot or they got ADD and they'll just get married with someone they don't even own a, a full fucking year. By the way, I've met about a dozen people that have done that. And one thing is always clear. They're fucking delusional, but that's another matter. I think that literally it's because we haven't carried over that same knowledge of listen you can't be shallow and superficial either it has to work humble has to work both ways if i if you make eighty thousand, and i'm not trying to get in your wallet i don't want to live in your wallet right and i got forty thousand like... dollars and i make forty thousand a year but your problem isn't that my personality even though we get along and all such shit it's just oh well you need to make double as much as me nah nah the problem is you you shrank your pool as you stated but the problem is also acknowledgement of the pro of the issue. The issue isn't it's hard to find a good man. No, the issue is you want a man to adhere to a superficial standard, 
standards are not a problem. I'm never saying standards are an issue. In fact, I think some people should have more standards. The problem is, is that you created a shallow standard. You're not uh, excused. Yeah. Yeah, you're not excused from shallow standards because you're a woman. Period. But these days I just say, hey, you can want what you want, but you got to recognize that whatever you want in a partner has a consequence. And sometimes that consequence could be you not having a partner for a long time. And if you're okay with that, then that's fine. No, they're usually not. <laughs> but if you're not, not okay so with they it, do is, then they you got to change bullshit. it up. They, yeah, they, they want to bullshit now because unfortunately, and this is, this is proven true, a lot of people on Tinder don't actually want to use Tinder. Like, or True. rather, sexual social media, they don't want to use sexual social media. But they, they can't really find don't. something. So, it used to be because of where they were located physically, geographically, right. and who they, the type of people they were around. If you were, in, I don't know, if you're in the middle of Kentucky, you're below that Mason-Dixon line, and you're a goth, good luck. Ooh, yeah. You like, ain't not, even if you, Ooh. not even if you're a Satanist or rather whatever religion in particular believes that the devil is the shit. Because apparently Satanists don't actually believe in Satan, which why the fuck did they pick that name? But I don't know. That's another story. That's and, another story. But they're very interesting, though. Yeah. They, a lot of good advocacy work for freedom of religion, though. Really good record on that. Not too crazy about the name, but really good legal exactly. record but see, on here's defending the thing, people. If you're in Kentucky... Your pool is shrunk before you even became a goth, probably. But here's the yeah. thing, though. You know, at some point in time, you're going to make two choices. Get out of where you are, or you're going to settle for fuck buddies, or you're going to be miserable, and you're just going to stay with somebody you don't respect or like, and you're just going to take it because, well, this is the best I can do. But and I think thing. that's what a lot, I think that's what really happens with a lot of men and women, and why there's so much relationship-based trauma and marriage-based trauma that men and women have because of those three reasons you just said. Yeah, they that for is someone huge. who was in proximity, not who was compatible. And that's where the problems start. And that's where the therapy should really start after that eventually ends. And you're not seeing a lot of people go for that. I know that therapy can cost money, but for the 20 year olds that are still in college or are still on their parents' insurance, yeah, you can go to that. Yeah, like, would actually help. Yeah, like, but I, then I, again, I, go ahead. Yeah, like, I, I understand just, you know, from being that person and also because, well, you haven't, I don't really talk about it on Facebook, but I've had to or either just moved around a lot because of work or the military. So a serious relationship was, well, not even a serious, more like a committed relationship was practically not, not even possible. And what I could get, unfortunately, they were of the slut variety and the whole variety. So I wasn't trying to, you know, jump into that pool because even right. if I'm just, if I just say, well, I'm gonna just bang some sluts until I can find somebody I actually like. Here's the problem with that. You know, you don't know if that particular extremely slutty person in the military a already got somebody b uh they're fucking crazy so if you try to leave they become extremely insecure and try to fuck your life up and shit like that even though maybe you fucked them one or two times and dude i've seen all these situations and don't get me wrong i didn't have to live most of these situations i'm good I, i've got dick patients for lack of a better term i don't know mm -hmm. if there's a proper name for it but I ain't a slut. That's the best I can tell you. But thing is, is that I, I've even seen it where people think that they, they genuinely feel like they have somebody and that they're going to start a relationship with them. Oh, it turns out they was fucking people in five different barracks while you weren't, while you weren't paying attention. Because if you're in a different barracks from somebody, you're in a different company or platoon, battalion, whatever, you're not going to interact with that other person. So she can pretty much, or he can get pretty much get away scot-free. But in my right. case, it's she's because I'm straight. And I, I basically, hey, tell you what, how about you be in this friend zone and I not fuck you? Okay, right. how's that? And they going to take it or leave it at that point. But the thing is, is that even without that, hey, if, I, if my agent could book me for weeks at a time in a particular area or state, I, I go live in that area. Obviously, I do it the cheapest way possible. I get right. an Airbnb or these, and they're, they're, they're few and far between these days, but I get one of those comedian houses, which mm -hmm. they're not really comedian houses. What happens is whoever wants to book you, 
or the agency is big enough to where they can set you up in some place that is nearby and <laughs> you just go there. But here's the thing. Usually, if you do it that way, they want a bigger right. cut. Now, there's nothing wrong with a bigger Ooh. cut. They're spending more money on you. But here's the thing. If my traveling expenses are covered by the motherfuckers who want me, then you're getting a bigger cut for what? I still got to buy my own food. You just gave me a bed. Bitch, I would have been better off literally renting a motel for weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now made Airbnb out cheaper. Exists. Yeah, Airbnb wasn't a thing also. Also, some agencies don't actually really trust Airbnb that much. But the thing is, is that, like, I'm just sitting up here thinking, look, I know my shit been unstable. So mm-hmm. I understand it. And I would tell whoever I'm with, like, look, I can't do long distance relationships. Not because I hate, I do hate them, but it wouldn't be fair to you. Because if I go and work over here or if I'm in, fucking with Uncle Sam and me sitting at home in Chicago doing nothing for months out of the year, that's not fair to you. It's not. Yeah. So, you know, despite my inability to fear women, because my dad raised me right, uh, I'm also not the type of person that'll just, you know, fuck, pump and dump, because eh, I feel like getting my dick wet today. But those dudes exist. And the dumb part is, is that a lot of women fucking fall for the shit because they were never taught, and this is what wraps back into the VR shit, that female incels or whatever form of incel there is, they're not taught some of the basics about relationships or just people in relationships. People will lie to you just to get some ass. People will pretend to be in a committed relationship just to get some ass until the right person comes along. I've seen people who literally explain that they have two girlfriends and two girlfriends don't know it, and here's why. One's a fucking idiot, but she hot, and the other one, she speaks to his soul, but she's not as hot. I'm just sitting up here like, so instead of helping the dumb one get smart, Right. You'd rather cheat or better yet technically cheat on both, not cheat on one, but cheat on both of them with the other person because one of them is is a fun fuck and the other one feels like a soulmate. I'm just sitting up here like, is she really a soulmate if you want to fuck somebody else still? But the problem is, is that they're also not taught what that does to people and how that makes people feel. So insecurities right. pop up and then stupid offensive sexist statements come out i hate all men because you're all the same like first off my, i don't understand this concept of always wanting to stereotype because if a man did that y'all be up in arms I've, i can't tell you how many times i've heard some version of all men are like this all men do this all men are the same and i'm just sitting up here like why the fuck is this somehow okay for you to say like why are you just spewing that like it's true you want to help your friend after a bad breakup you don't say shit like that don't But yeah, that's that's just my two cents. And I it, guess it ties back to the VR topic because again, there's a lack of education in a lot of parts of the human experience. And I think that that's a reason why things are so cold out here, especially when it comes to friendships and personal relationships, because people really haven't been taught how to coexist with each with other. Yeah, like I've seen, and this is the last one, and it's pretty short. Mind you, I don't talk to her anymore. Um, I knew a girl who had a wasn't a boyfriend. You know, she couldn't find mm-hmm. a man, or rather, the boys around her didn't like her. It could have been because she was a little bit obese. She wasn't like you know, she could take up two seats when she sit down. But it could have been mm-hmm. just because she was a little bit obese. It could have been that she was timid and scared and shit all the time, and no one naturally took an interest in it. There's a bunch of reasons. There's a bunch of reasons. But see, here's the thing. Her friend, his friends liked her as a person Mm -hmm. and he would, she would be invited to things and he would be there and not know she was coming. He got in his head that she was getting too attached when she literally wasn't, wasn't attached. She was a nice person. Mm -hmm. But then he started going around telling his friends, she's crazy. And that, you know, he don't want to go to shit where she's going to be there. What do you think that did to her? How, how do you think that makes her feel? Man, that messed her up because she wasn't even interested in him. She's probably thinking, bro, I wasn't even interested in you and now I got to deal with this? No, no, because remember, it's her fuck buddy. See, the thing is, though, she likes relationships. She couldn't get one. That was the closest she could get. Because you got to oh, remember. Oh, so she settled. Yeah. And I'm just sitting up here like, listen, that's a fucked up situation, but 
you didn't help the matter either. You have yeah. a car. You don't have to date within your immediate pool. And you are you understand the internet enough to know that you can go and look for people. There's eHarmony. This is before, you know, Tinder fucked that up. But there was eHarmony, which I think actually owns Tinder now, which is kind of sad. It's eHarmony. Bumble had just become a thing fairly recently. And she didn't do none of that. So basically, she was waiting for going around somebody in my friends list who actually looks like they have an interest in me. You can't do that. Because that means as soon as somebody saying hand you a bar compliment and you drop in draws you think he not gonna pump and dump also you're showing him you're not worth more than the pump and dump because the fact that you even allowed it to happen in the first place it's just like look all you have to do at some all time like look you like a guy you don't want to be a fuck buddy and that's the first thing he wants you to do immediately say let's just be friends and walk the fuck away that's all you got to do right and don't play the chase game because all that means is he's going to try to eventually Claim you be your boyfriend and still fuck somebody else on the side nine times out of ten. I'm just saying, do not start what you don't want to have in the first place. But right. because but who's around to tell these people that? Almost every female I've ever met that's been in a fuck buddy situation, whether they want to or not. Or to they, say that it's okay for them to say no to the fuck buddy and it's okay to be single. You don't get a lot of people telling women that. And that's kind of messed up because that's where a lot of their problems really start. Yeah, Nobody yeah, is telling also, them that remember, it's okay they the, for them to be them. That's true. But also there is a bit of an issue with it, depending on the person. Let me just asterisk that. We, you, they have a ticking clock and we don't. So that's something we could never truly factor in. Because first right. off, they, it's not like they're going to know the exact time and date when, hey, guess what? You out of eggs, bitch. Tough titty. Right. Now, mind you, freezing eggs is a thing. Guess what? That's not covered with free health care. So I understand that aspect of it. But the thing is, fuck buddy's not going to be that guy. Mm -hmm. And if you just decide, and this is disgusting and people have done this too. You're so insecure and scared that you just decide, okay, I'm going to have a fuck buddy. And then when I think I'm pregnant, I'm going to run away from him, not talk to him. Or just tell him, hey, I'm done. And now, and, and how is your kid going to feel about that? Like you're even going to tell him the truth. Oh, you were born because, yeah, I, I wanted a child and I didn't know how long I had. And, uh, yeah, your dad didn't fuck off. I just ran. He has no idea you exist. They're not going to do that. They're not. Mm -hmm. When I had a friend that actually found out that that's what happened to him, it broke him. As a man. He man. canceled his wedding. Wow. His foundation was fucked up because he was the guy that's thinking, I'm, go I'm here to do what my father couldn't do. Turns out your father never even had a say so in it. But yeah, that's uh, my sad example. I could go talk to her right now if I wanted to, you know, but she said something offensive to me in one of those ways where she didn't know it was offensive. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just stop. Because every time I talk to you, even if I have a good time, it always ends with you shooting yourself in the foot in a relationship because you settled and then you get sad about the outcome just because you're not an asshole doesn't mean you can't fuck your own life up you know you could be the nicest person in the world and you could be the smartest person in the world but if you pour gasoline on your hand and strike a match you're still an idiot it's crazy so let me ask you something is there a set mindset you think North American society has to be at, or rather a set chronological year when you think we as citizens should be actually primarily infusing virtual socialization in our, in our society. Like oh, what do you man. specifically think needs to happen or just a ballpark year of when you think that should happen? Um, as for me, I say 2050. society, um, Let's see what happens in another decade. I mean, with the quarantines and everything, we're doing everything virtual and we're going to have a lot of good data to see what worked, what didn't, and what we can improve on. And I'll hopefully we can use that stuff. I'm thinking maybe 2030, 2035-ish. See, Let's I'm, just see what the next decade does. The nation makes me think I should be pessimistic, but pessimistic is not realistic. 
and I was basically born into being a realist, I say 2050 because here's the thing. One of the tr one of the truest things that's ever happened with society once we understood the concept of childhood and adolescence is not young adult because that's actually right. true. I think it was uh, until 1840s or the 1850s, we didn't perceive adolescence as adolescence. Nope. That was young adulthood because of the mortality rate. Yeah, that was no it's because there was no one to teach us that it existed. But yeah, it was like a nine or ten year old is a small adult. Fuck no. But right. um yeah, um the thing is is that all the millennials and idiot teenagers of right now are gonna turn into the 10 years away, 15 years away from senior citizenship. And they're going to think, man, I was a stupid kid back then. I believed all these positive things and notions, but I never fucking voted. Basically shit Obama been talking about for the past like five, six years. Everybody who want to go and do this shit, statistics show, ain't going up and doing this shit when it matters. They'll say they do this shit online, but they won't get up and vote. You know, armchair, mm -hmm. he called it armchair internet activism or something like that. And he yeah. was right. Yeah. Well, now those guys got kids or they got a possible grandkid coming on the way i think that's when they should start really doing vr socialism because now they can organize they can weed out crazy people who have who believe in the same thing but take it to extremes a lot easier and then we could see change happen in months or weeks instead of four-year increments followed by let's pray you get a mayor or a governor that's not a republican and shit like that <laughs> But at the same time, it has the potential to go the complete opposite. They could stay that way because they never learned to accept, I am capable of being wrong. I am a human just like any other. Right. So, yeah, um, I'm going to close this out by saying, hey, uh, happy to have you aboard, man. I already know once the other guys talk to you and get to pick your brain, like, you're going to see if you're not among friends, you're among similar mindsets slash also among alternate perspectives who are willing to listen. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, um, sorry, ladies of the world, men of the world who are, are, you have a hard time getting a relationship that's functional. Remember, we learned in the late 90s that over 60% of American families were dysfunctional. So right. what did you think was going to happen when they got into a relationship? They were going to become functional. Exactly. We need to take care and learn about each other so we can understand and take care of ourselves as well. If I know I'm as a woman, I'm scared to talk to men because I don't, I can't find the one that wants a serious relationship. Then I know I need to go online. I know I need to not assume that there's something wrong with me. But if there's no one around to tell me that, you know, what's going to happen? Nothing. It's going to be the exact same thing that happens. Exactly. Hypersensitivity and insecurities walk hand in hand. Insecurities can make you hypersensitive. Hypersensitive can, is an insecurity and can give you more. So if you can't just talk to somebody or listen to somebody who's explaining you why your logic is wrong, then... You just fuck. But that's why I say it can go either way. Personally, I'm just trying to save up enough to where I can move the fuck to Canada. And maybe, just maybe, Europe later on. But for the time being, you know, while I'm waiting on getting that crypto guap. Uh, hey, look. I don't have a trouble with women. I have no trouble getting ass. But I try to get relationships. But even I note that there are women out here who just automatically make assumptions about what I'm looking for. And. I want to be married, right. but I understand where it's coming from, and it kind of hurts my soul a little bit. Oh, it's okay. I know you like looking at other girls. Just, you know, make sure you don't fuck too many. I prefer this, you know, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about contracting something. It's like, no, I want to just have a relationship with you. <laughs> right. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Leslie, that, that was her name. <laughs> and I was, and she looked at me, and she, she, she had this big, embarrassed grin on her face, like she was trying to hide that she was embarrassed, but also she was happy at the same time. But I'm like, what the fuck happened to you for you to even automatically assume that shit? So yeah, you got any closing statements, thesis? 
Well, my only closing statement I have is I can't wait to do this again, and I think this was great, and I'm looking forward to talking to the other guys. Cool, cool. cool. Uh, just so we're clear, we throw this up on YouTube with a video, a gaming video track behind it, usually footage I capture, because I can capture pretty much all the modern devices at this point, and PC. And But for SoundCloud, we just put up the audio. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, I'm going to get you links, and just remember to plug it, for people who you know might like podcasts or just throw it on your, your status update, you know, possibly catch some new fish, go about your business and don't think about the views too much. Because remember, we don't really do this for attention. If we want attention, it would just be fantasy right. star and MMO shit because that's that's what gets the thousands of views. That's what gets the hundreds of views on YouTube. This is for me. This is for my friends. And this is for just people who just want to hear people be able to talk about their difference of opinions and not just say this guy's an idiot because he doesn't think like me all right all right with that being said this has been another exciting episode of token games podcast i will see you guys when i see you guys take it easy see you next time